Thank you. Uh, good morning and good evening. My name is Lynn Hagen, and I am with Zebra's global audience marketing team responsible for developing the warehousing vision study that we're going to talk about today with the guidance of our business intelligence group. We are happy to have all of you from around the world join us today for this webinar. We have our internal sales and partner community together from North America, Latin America, Europe, Middle East, and Africa regions today. We will be recording the webinar and we'll post to our partner gateway and the source for you to refer back to later. We are honored to have Mark Wheeler as our presenter today. As the Director of Supply Chain Solutions, Mark Wheeler is responsible for Zebra's Warehouse and Supply Chain Solutions Global Strategy. He collaborates closely with customers' supply chain operations teams, as well as Zebra's product development teams and solution partners to align emerging technology solutions with customer needs. Mr. Wheeler has held numerous positions in supply chain execution throughout his 30-year career, including strategic consulting, automated warehouse design, build, and complex system integration. He is a frequent speaker at industry events, and we are happy to have him with us today to present the global results from our most recent warehousing vision study, where we surveyed 1,400 IT and operations decision makers in the warehousing industry across um, all, of, all of our regions, North America, Latin America, EMEA, and APAC. And Mark, I'll let you go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn, and thank everybody for uh, spending some time with us today. We're going to share our uh, global vision study for warehouse, and I'm just going to provide some commentary on some of the key findings and how they uh, can relate to uh, to our customers' businesses, their business objectives, and the Zebra solutions, and how we can um, leverage these findings and leverage this study to help communicate uh, to our customers our value proposition and um, and um, and drive sales success. So we are in the midst of a rapidly changing uh, uh, warehouse industry in the supply chain. So whether you're a manufacturer, a wholesaler, 3PL or retailer, uh, chances are your uh, supply chain is undergoing change. And uh, we understood that. That's kind of the, the uh, motivation behind investing in this survey is to capture that and, um, and align it with uh, some of our go-to-market findings. So we're gonna look at trends um, in the industry. We're gonna look at uh, key operational challenges and what our customers' views are of those challenges over time and uh, what solutions and technology are important to them over time. So we'll start with some of the top trends, the top uh, uh, findings of the study. And, and I think these are really, really interesting uh, findings. What's the main driver for investment uh, from our customer viewpoint? Uh, across the board is speed. It's faster delivery. It's, ex it's uh, escalating customer expectations on service, order turnaround time, and fulfillment. That, of course, is largely driven by e-commerce, but it really does span across the supply chain as well. I'm sure you see that with your customers. We certainly see it. Uh, in our customer interactions, that that is a, uh, a reality for many customers and they're struggling to respond to that. That causes uh, uh, the need very often for new warehouses in new locations with new workflows and of course new technology to support that. On the challenges side, we see labor recruitment um, uh, rising to one of the key challenges. And this is across geographies uh, that it's not just about labor efficiency and productivity, which are always important uh, uh, objectives, but it's actually the availability of labor and the availability of labor that's uh, interested in and, uh, and wants to take on the type of work that we provide in the warehouse. And that relates directly to the need for better solutions uh, from Zebra and our, our selling community. Uh, from a strategies perspective, looking out over the next five years uh, and, and the, the, the uh, Rapidly evolving landscape, both operationally and technically, customers agree that new technology is critical to their uh, meeting their, their goals, to being successful. 
Uh, so that's good news. And uh, it comes along with challenges about exactly how to do that. And again, that's that's opportunity for us to add value and help out. One of the key questions looking forward is the impact of automation, you know, physical automation. There's, uh, there's clearly a lot of innovation and new solutions that are uh, available and becoming available in the marketplace. And we assess, you know, what the impact of that is likely to be over time. Uh, the, the, the main finding is while full automation and taking humans out of the, out of the operation uh, is, is, a, is in, in the vision of a small portion of the audience, for the vast majority, uh, they expect to have a significant amount of, of human involvement in the, in the workflows, in the processes, in the, in the warehouses, and to invest in technology to support those those humans and those workflows. So you know, we talked a little bit about how uh, the supply chains are being disrupted <coughs> by the uh, escalating customer service expectations. <coughs> and um, and this is absolutely a driver for growth. Uh, you know, restructuring supply chains, positioning facilities and inventory closer to the point of demand uh, is, is something that's happening across the board. And uh, you know, manufacturers are having to ship uh, directly to consumers in many cases, something that they are uh, traditionally not um, uh, really very skilled in doing. And that creates uh, opportunity and creates opportunity for us to help our customers uh, move to success. <clears throat> so when we look at uh, uh, this digital revolution, you know, for uh, B2C and B2B, you know, it's not just a, a B2C phenomenon by any means. What are some of the growth areas? So here we have a chart. Uh, the black bars here represent the growth areas within three years. Uh, and these are the number of uh, percentage organizations reporting this as an area of growth for them. Um, and then the blue bar is within five years. So you can look out uh, uh, and see that there, there's a significant amount of growth happening with uh, new processes such as returns operations. You know, we have to be green, we have to be uh, manufacturers in particular have to be concerned with the complete supply chain, not just, sh not just shipping. Um, Value-added services, you know, light manufacturing, kitting, uh, ticketing, these kinds of things. Utilizing task interleaving. This is something that will come up again and again as we look at leveraging better visibility and working smarter, uh, that task interleaving is an opportunity uh, to, uh, to leverage those capabilities. Higher levels of employment. Uh, not less, interestingly enough, even with the automation. Uh, expectations for higher volumes, uh, both in terms of the number of SKUs carry and, uh, and the overall volume, and, and all of that resulting in um, the expectations for expansion, both in the number of warehouses and the average size going forward. So the expectations are high um, uh, for growth. <clears throat> and that, and uh, that, that growth, and that change represents uh, challenges, operational challenges. It's kind of akin to changing the wheel on a car while it's in motion. Uh, customers need, you know, they, they recognize the need that they have to integrate new technology and new uh, processes while at the same time, not missing a beat on uh, their ability to uh, function day to day and uh, continue to, uh, to ship orders. And so technology utilization is identified as the top challenge. Right behind that, we have labor, labor recruitment, uh, and competing for labor, and then making that labor as efficient and productive as it can be. Then capacity utilization. And the more we move into uh, automated operations, the more important capacity utilization becomes as a key performance indicator, if not uh, a key challenge. Quality of WMS data, you know, as we get into to, uh, requirements like traceability in food and pharmaceutical, um, and, and really uh, lots of different industry verticals are looking for more granular uh, information and data about the products that they're handling and the products that they're shipping. And that translates into more requirements for data capture at the point of activity. Uh, more scanning, more RFID, more labeling uh, across the board, and then inventory management. And, from an inventory management perspective, the, the, you know, the Zebra opportunity to help there is to help our customers maintain very high levels of inventory accuracy. Inventory is often the, uh, the largest asset on the books, and there's a lot that we can do uh, to help our customers manage that asset more effectively. As we double click into the labor situation, you know, we talked about labor being um, you know, rising to the top, really, is one of the, the top concerns, uh, not just about making it more productive, 
but about uh, uh, being able to get the labor in-house that they need to run their operations. We hear this a lot from customers. They're competing for labor. A lot of these e-commerce fulfillment uh, um, centers are clustered and are competing with each other. And as labor tends to migrate then to the, to, uh, the highest paying job or maybe the best environment to work in within, a, within an area, uh, what that results in is more turnover. Um, that means I need to onboard more and more employees each year to get the same amount of work done, which means the time to train new employees to full productivity is really a critical uh, a factor. And it becomes a huge cost as turnover increases. And so these are the average weeks to train new staff to full productivity. It's between four and five, depending on the process. Uh, it varied a lot from two to three up to 12. I was with a, a large customer just yesterday doing a, uh, a briefing, and they said it was more like 12 for them. Uh, and they're, and they're relatively straightforward processes, uh, basically case pick. So this is a huge area, and this relates directly to the, the uh, value of Android, the value of touch optimized solutions in the warehouse, solutions that are intuitively easy to learn and use, the value of wearable solutions that are easy to learn and use. Um, and it relates really directly to that, that value proposition. We can help our, our customers uh, shorten this time to, uh, to uh, productivity. As you look at the view for automation, and we talked already about how the majority of customers really see uh, uh, automation working alongside with augmentation. So augmentation, you know, that's the idea of equipping workers with the best technology to make them um, as productive and as accurate uh, as they can be with solutions that are comfortable to use and easy to learn and use. And uh, that remains as important as it's always been. Um, it's going to become more and more important for the uh, uh, human workers to actually be kind of integrated with and work alongside effectively with uh, automation and automated solutions. And so we have a lot of opportunity to help our customers kind of navigate uh, through this as they combine humans and automated solutions increasingly out there in different, uh, different workflows in different, uh, different areas. Now, we, we hear a lot about the younger generation having maybe different attitudes toward work, particularly the physical labor that's represented in a lot of warehouse operations and the difficulty that our customers are experiencing with hiring, attracting, and retaining um, these younger workers. They, of course, come into the, into the operation having used touch-optimized apps uh, maybe their entire uh, lives, but certainly that's their... Uh, Base point. So if we can provide them with edge technology in the warehouse that is touch optimized, that is intuitive, it's easy to learn and use, they're going to be happier, they're going to be more productive, and, um, and that's going to result in, in hard dollar savings for our customers. We need to go out and articulate uh, the value of that and, and help our customers move to solutions um, you know, on Android that leverage you know, form factors like the TC83 or the uh, WT6000 to, uh, to deliver those kinds of solutions. <clears throat> Looking uh, you know, down at uh, labor in a little bit more detail, what do our customers see as uh, the top uh, objectives around labor? <clears throat> uh, they really, uh, one of the key findings is the, the, the need for training. So training uh, on, you know, video on device or other training solutions that we can provide can be, uh, can very, be very helpful. Um, but the, the, the top initiative, worker comfort and ergonomics. So help our customers understand the value and how to apply wearable technology to their unique operational needs in various parts of the operation. You know, Zebra has continued to invest and expand the wearable portfolio to do exactly that. Uh, optimizing the use of temporary seasonal labor, again, goes to rapid onboarding and ease of use. Uh, increased training, again, you know, video on device, whatever we can do to help these new users uh, uh, be effective uh, uh, very quickly and reduce that time and expense for recruiting and onboarding. That's gonna help our, our customers achieve their operational goals. <clears throat> so this is really, I think, a key finding. You look at the top two boxes here and you see a, a bit of a disconnect. So 80% agree that implementing new technology is needed to be competitive. Uh, to modernize, they, they understand that, uh, but almost the same percentage say that they are slow to implement new devices and new technology. 
we certainly see this in the warehouse market. You know, only about half the market at this point have taken big steps towards uh, moving to Android. Uh, our feedback is that almost everybody expects to get to Android. It's a matter of timing. That remains a major opportunity and focus as we go into 2020. Um, but it, it's really up to us to help our customers understand uh, you know, what their options are, help them make the right choices and move aggressively through proof of concept pilot and, uh, and full deployment. And there's still a lot of uh, opportunity out there for applying technology in kind of a greenfield area. We uh, report that half of the respondents say they're still using paper-based systems for inventory control. So that's cycle counting, it's issue uh, investigation and resolution. You know, that's gonna be a huge area for, for tablets and other technology solutions there. There are opportunities to expand real-time uh, information into other areas, out into the yard, into the transportation management issue, uh, or TMS functions as well. So still a lot of, uh, of opportunity out there to, uh, to help our customers. And as you look kind of over time, as to how this plays out. We see uh, um, a kind of a maturity taking place with the use of technology um, over time. So the black bar here represents 2019 or the current state, uh, the blue uh, 2024 kind of a future state. And, and what are the importance of these uh, different operational outcomes over time? You see really a, a very clear and significant transition. You know, the focus today is on the individual worker. Let's make them as productive as possible. Uh, let's get them wearable tech that, that um, is ergonomic and, and effective and, and uh, error proofs the, the, the process. And then we really wanna broaden the focus to team productivity, uh, to workflow conformity, which is another way of saying, you know, accuracy, getting the job done as, as designed 100% uh, of the time. <clears throat> uh, and that might be tools like Workforce Connect, uh, improving communication and overall visibility of the team. And then you see the focus moves really more towards asset utilization, which you would expect as the level of automation uh, it increases, the level of capital intensity in the facility increases. Um, and then we get you know, a little more mature and we're moving with more real-time guidance and decision-making. So instead of just relying on the occasional barcode scan, we're really leveraging location-aware solutions, we're leveraging RFID, those kinds of technologies. And then finally, operate with data-driven performance. And, and you can imagine a highly censored operation at this point that is perhaps relying on, on uh, more uh, direct sensing of the physical environment, things like smart sense and, and uh, RFID and active location. And we're able at that point maybe to, to, to move towards uh, um, uh, machine uh, learning and artificial intelligence to optimize different physical processes. So that's kind of the maturity that we see happening over the next uh, the next five years so that our customers see uh, uh, more correctly. As we look at the WMS, because not much of this is going to happen without the WMS, we asked for some feedback on what the visions are uh, for the WMS space. And what we see are the ERP modules. You might think of that as SAP uh, or Oracle WM modules declining slightly. Uh, the legacy WMS, which you can define as perhaps something that's uh, homegrown or highly modified, been around a long time, uh, declining, and most of that, uh, those users moving over towards a full feature to best of breed. This is where we see the top five WMSs. We see uh, you know, like Manhattan and JDA and High Jump and, and others continuing to take share in the WMS space as they build out their solutions, where else execution systems remaining flat and, and a significant growth in a mobile execution system, which would be you know, a subsystem that augments uh, the WMS in, in specific areas. Uh, so we'll see significant growth in that, which you know, is, is uh, consistent with what we see as kind of a, a growth in complexity at the edge. You know, as we move from an edge that's dominated by telnet, by terminal emulation, by character-based user experience, to something that's much more varied um, it's touch optimized uh, that will use a variety of different form factors uh, and different uh, you know, modalities for working with the user. We'll see the mobile execution systems grow. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> again, as we move from green screen to a graphical, graphical UI uh, that comes along with Android, Android doesn't require that, but it does make it possible. Um, and uh, what are our customers' expectations around that? Well, over 80% report that they do expect to be on Android 
by 2024. That varies a little bit by geography, as we'll, uh, we'll show a little bit later. What do they expect from that? They expect better productivity. Um, they expect uh, more flexibility, the ability to adapt, and uh, they expect uh, more um, um, stability in terms of performance uh, across the employee base. In other words, as the solutions get better, uh, the variability between the very best and the average and the worst uh, should uh, should decrease as we uh, as we provide better solutions and better technologies. Uh, what functions and what areas do uh, uh, do we see growth in uh, in mobility within the four walls? And here we see again the black is 2019 or current state, and uh, the blue is future state uh, 2024. And so you can see across the board, the expectation is that mobile technology will be leveraged in uh, all of these operations uh, to, to a very large extent. I think that is uh, absolutely the, uh, uh, the case as we go forward. And that represents, again, you know, opportunity to get the right technology into the right process and the right workflow. Uh, and our customers certainly need help and assistance in making those choices and, uh, and making those investments. Uh, particularly as we move away from uh, terminal emulation. Terminal emulation. <clears throat> okay, so uh, here we have 77% of respondents agreeing that uh, augmenting workers with technology is the best way to introduce automation into the warehouse. And this really goes to the question of, uh, do customers expect automation to uh, completely displace the human workforce or to help it out? And when you start to look at the innovations and in automated solutions, what they really do, the autonomous mobile solutions in particular, they take out the non-value add time of certain types of warehouse processes. In other words, they take out the travel time. That's really where their value is. Uh, they're, they're doing the transportation uh, in many cases automatically, but the value add time, uh, the actual picking that needs to occur uh, for the foreseeable future is still gonna be done by the humans and those humans need to be augmented with technology uh, not only to fulfill the task as they do today, but to be tightly and highly integrated with those, those automated systems as they go about their work. So let's drill down and look at some uh, specific technologies and what the growth expectations are for them. <clears throat> Between 2019, in this case, the future state is 2022. So we're going out about 30 months here um, in, the, in the planning horizon. What we see is growth in, in handhelds. We see significant growth in handheld scanners, um, significant uh, growth in, in rugged tablets. So uh, you know, some of that will be from mobilizing the managers, the supervisors, and the inventory control uh, functions that are maybe are not mobilized today. Uh, some of that will be from rugged tablets that are making their way onto various material handling equipment and lift trucks or out into the yard. We see significant growth in mobile printing. And when customers look to speed up um, their operations to increase or rather decrease order turnaround time, very often mobile printing is a key part of that. Uh, it's a huge opportunity to help our customers operate more effectively, more productive, faster turnaround time and fewer errors. And the continued growth that we see in the use of wearable technology. And we'll see wearables um, kind of expand, you know, the, the, the risk of wearable remains a really important part of the portfolio, um, but we'll see other form factors come into that, and that category is going to continue to expand in some, some interesting ways. So, um, you know, helping our customers leverage wearable technology remains an important part of how we can help them be successful. Okay, so how are we going to control uh, inventory? We talked about inventory, uh, you know, SKUs proliferating, we talk about the need for more granular data capture because customers are looking for more control and more information about the inventory on hand. That might be perishable inventory. It might be you know, the, anything in the food supply chain and the pharmaceutical supply chain in particular, but it also goes into virtually every other supply chain. Customers want better visibility and better control. And for the most part, um, that's gonna continue to be delivered by barcoding, but even the barcode, uh, we see significant opportunity for improvement there as only uh, uh, less than a third of respondents report that they have adequate uh, carton and item level barcoding uh, for most of their inbound items. So supplier compliance, 
uh, is, is an important focus. I think, you know, it helps if we emphasize that with our customers. Our supply chain partners and our customers already know this. They know the pain of dealing with product that does not come in the door adequately uh, labeled and marked with all the information at all the pack levels that they need. Uh, but uh, we can help by uh, helping articulate that. And it, and it absolutely increases the value of Zebra and real-time uh, solutions when everything can be automatically identified with something as simple as a barcode scan. We see the, uh, uh, the rollout of GS1 standard barcodes into different industries as uh, helpful to our customers and helpful to uh, you know, the Zebra value proposition with an imager-based scanner, for example, we can go in with a GS1 barcode and capture all the extended data uh, about that item with a simple barcode scan and help our customers to, to uh, leverage that data and be more productive. We do see growth in RFID as well in a number of different segments, uh, certainly dominated in, in retail, um, for the, the retail use case, but uh, other uh, uh, use cases as well, leveraging RFID back into the supply chain. So getting that digital voice, we'll see growth in RFID and growth in, in the more sophisticated use of, of barcoding. <clears throat> other technology that we see uh, growth in, this is between 2019 and 2024. Sensor technology in general, we expect operations, assets, uh, people, and materials to be more visible to the infrastructure through sensors, including passive RFID, uh, including active locationing, and uh, locationing technology continues to expand with BLE, with Wi-Fi, with, um, with from the Zebra perspective, from ultra wideband and from WearNet uh, and other technologies as well. And Zebra's doing an awful lot to uh, deliver that technology and to drive operational value from it with our solution strategy. Voice direction is gonna to continue to grow. I think that's not just for the task worker, but um, it, for other uses of voice as well, such as the enterprise assistant type of approach. And then uh, augmented and virtual reality uh, expectations are uh, for growth there as well. And uh, we're, we'll be pushing hard into some of those spaces. <clears throat> on the automation side, kind of coming already on, on the value that they provide, um, it, um, uh, depends very much on the operational model of a particular customer, whether this technology will have a significant impact on their operation or not. Zebra, you may know, we have uh, made venture investments in some of the key uh, innovative companies in this space in the last year. We've made uh, public our, our, our venture investments into companies like Fetch, uh, like Locus, like Plus One Robotics, and uh, you know, working with them to to uh, optimize, let's say, the, the way the human is uh, interacting with these technology solutions. And uh, these are going to continue to have an impact on uh, certain types of operations that fit those operational profiles. So we went into this expecting to, to find that uh, automation would be uh, far more uh, applicable to repetitive tasks than non-repetitive tasks. And that is you know, somewhat borne out here, uh, not to a huge extent, frankly. <clears throat> um, with full automation within five years uh, being 29% uh, in the highly repetitive tasks, so you might think sorting or picking, um, and 25% in the non-repetitive, uh, again, with the vast majority expecting to have a mix of augmentation and, and automation. So what types of automation are customers thinking about? Well, thinking about certainly robotics, uh, the bots uh, growing over this time, we've seen uh, a lot of interest in, in drones for specific applications like yard management or for inventory control, where the drone can kind of identify, uh, does the, the, the inventory that they're seeing with either vision or RFID or barcode uh, consistent with the system of record? Uh, we see that mainly in bulk storage, but also in some cases in rack. So we'll see uh, growth in, in, in uh, drone, uh, drones in that area, and then autonomous vehicles. So uh, you know, people actually uh, replacing or, or retrofitting traditional material handling equipment to make it autonomous, uh, to make lift trucks uh, and, and even pallet jacks autonomous with some of the sensor technology. And we'll see some growth in, uh, in those areas as well. Ultimately, 
when we look at automation investment plans, uh, as uh, uh, operations mature, as operations get uh, more censored up and uh, more visible, uh, more reliably and grand, uh, visible to uh, uh, management systems, that we'll see functions like machine uh, uh, methods like machine learning uh, in, increase and uh, be able to deliver on predictive analytics web. Uh, be able to deliver on uh, AR and VR uh, types of solutions out on the floor. That's what our customers are telling us, and that's uh, certainly um, what we expect. <clears throat> so when, again, looking at augmentation versus full automation, kind of a breakdown by warehouse function, <clears throat> and you can see where the expectations for full automation are the greatest. You see uh, loading in particular, so automated loading. Uh, Put away sortation, so that might be a, you know an automatic storage and retrieval solution. It's going to uh, deliver on that, but less on receiving, you know, highly variable process, less on inspection, human intensive, uh, less actually on picking, um, which requires a lot of, uh, uh, you know, consumes actually about half the labor in the facility today, and yet is still a fairly complex task uh, in most cases to try and, and uh, truly automate or mechanize. So let's, uh, let's look at some of the variations by industry vertical in terms of, of their objectives by 2024. On the manufacturing side, uh, we see this really challenged by moving to uh, changing their outbound profiles. You know, shipping at an item level directly to their consumer, to their end user is a major challenge for them. Be able to uh, uh, move to the uh, full supply chain management, so the reverse logistics, the full life cycle management of their products are increasingly challenged to do that, um, you know, to, to comply with environmental regulations or simply to chase, uh, uh, you know, the, the environmental responsibility is important, um, not just from a regulatory standpoint, but from building their brand. And it's important to many more and more of their customers over time. So they're very focused on that. Uh, just in time manufacturing in mainly a discrete environment, is uh, you know, obviously in very wide use today. Uh, it supports uh, or requires uh, lots of, of uh, the types of material handling and material uh, flow technology that uh, Zebra and our partners provide, and that's gonna continue to grow. On the retail side, we see, again, the focus on speed, uh, and they're under a, a dramatic and rapid evolution in the way products are delivered to consumers, and so they are struggling um, to leverage all of their assets as a competitive advantage. That includes the store, that includes dedicated fulfillment centers that are dedicated to e-commerce, and it includes uh, very often sharing uh, uh, fulfillment centers that uh, both uh, replenish the stores and ship uh, direct to consumers. So a lot of complexity there and, uh, and a lot of investment there on the retail side. As we look at uh, third-party logistics providers, 3PLs are a really uh, important part of the story here. They are seeing significant growth as many of the, of the um, you know, manufacturers and retailers in particular look to 3PLs to help them augment their operations, help them meet a lot of these um, you know, new requirements with a, with a competency and a speed that would be very hard for some of these companies to develop internally. Uh, or you know, just the 3PL is able to deliver scale and cost advantages um, uh, that the individual company couldn't achieve on their own. So what that means for, for Zebra and our selling community is that the 3PL community is, is a really critical segment for us to be successful in. Um, our technology has traditionally been uh, very well received by this community, in particular, the, the wearable portfolio is, uh, uh, something that uh, has been widely adopted in 3PLs, but they appreciate the Zebra capabilities across the board. They appreciate all the investments that we make. They leverage them. Uh, they put a priority typically on flexibility uh, because they have to service many customers. They have to service them over sometimes a short period of time. And so they need uh, technology solutions that are, that are flexible and adaptable. And uh, and they most of the time turn to Zebra for that. Uh, so we need to continue our focus on the 3PL. And if you can get to the, uh, you know, the engineering teams uh, that are designing new customer operations, help them understand 
the Zebra solution set um, and, and uh, help them understand how to apply a lot of these new technologies and the value of these new technologies, that's going to be critical because uh, when they understand it and they see the value of it, they will design it into operations uh, routinely, and that will continue to pay dividends for all concerned um, for many years. On the TNL side, <clears throat> um, lots of uh, disruption here as well. Lots of focus on uh, on the last mile. This is where we see you know, the value of some of our sensor-based solutions like trailer load optimization um, coming into play with widespread, pretty widespread expectations. On, uh, on implementation here. So that's the industry vertical view. Let's look at the regional view and some of the differences. Um, we're gonna focus uh, across the board as we look at uh, EMEA, expectations for uh, the average warehouse to grow significantly, uh, 26% uh, over the next five years. <laughs> that's uh, uh, quite a big change. Expectations for RFID and location technology uh, expected to grow as well. In Latin America, um, uh, labor efficiency and, and productivity uh, identified as the top challenge. So we want to be able to help our customers uh, apply the right technology and the right job to maximize that. Uh, the highest, I think, reported um, uh, expectations on Android adoption in Latin America with 95% uh, expecting to be on Android by uh, 2024. <clears throat> In, uh, in North America, uh, the focus is uh, on outbound productivity and outbound loading uh, to, to meet the needs of the, of the supply chain, you know, faster order turnaround time, <coughs> uh, higher accuracy, lower units of measure going out the door. All of that can drive cost if it's not done well. Um, and a lot of innovation and change um, um, around those areas. High expectations for trailer load optimization. Uh, you know, this is an area, it's a solution that we've had in market for uh, a couple of years. It's a, a part of the business typically, probably maybe more so in North America because of the long distances that are often traveled, but transportation drives a huge percentage of the cost. And there's typically very little true visibility uh, to, how, to how precisely these trailers are loaded, uh, whether they're arriving at the receiving dock for inbound or they're being loaded for outbound. Uh, there's not a lot of hard metrics about how they were loaded. Was it efficient? Uh, was it loaded in such a way to prevent damage? Um, and uh, so there's a lot of interest in deploying that type of technology going forward. So a little bit of metadata about the study. And um, uh, in terms of the respondents, uh, by, by geography, uh, by industry, a lot of manufacturing uh, represented here, transportation, 3PL, retail, Company size, uh, you know, between 500 to 1,000, 1 to 5,000, and then 5 to 10 representing a majority of the respondents by company size. Uh, so um, what I wanted to do here was kind of summarize what I think are the, the, the key findings from this study. <laughs> and and uh, Lynn is going to talk about how you can uh, access this data to support your marketing programs. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to kind of make the connection between what uh, companies are going through operationally, what their view of, of those challenges are, and how the Zebra and our partner community can help them achieve their goals uh, going forward. So with that, I will pass it back to, uh, to Lynn Hagel. All right, wonderful. Okay, well, uh, Mark just gave us a lot of really great information and I hope this was useful to you and um, we'll actually be asking you a few questions at the end um, just to gauge whether or not you know a present like presentation like this is helpful to you um, in your sales strategy um, but the first poll question I want to kind of end this presentation with as Mark said that we have um, we're seeing a lot of um, interest in automation and robotics and so we wanted to find out from you go ahead and launch that question Karen, Karen. Um, uh, how automation how, how much you're seeing um, automation and having those conversations with your customers so how often um, our conversations about mobile robotics coming up in your sales conversations. Never 
sometimes, often, very often, or all the time, it's a hot topic. Okay, so I'll read them out loud. So we have never at 6%, sometimes 56%, so that's 1 to 20% um, of sales conversations. Often at 21 to 40, we have 21%, and very often we have 18%. All the time is a zero. So those are the responses we got. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about some of the warehousing vision study uh, marketing collateral that we have. Um, oh, okay. I was hearing a beeping noise. I don't know if everybody else was. Okay, so the uh, warehousing, I'm sorry, what? Can everybody, can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Lynn. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Okay, so um, this vision study is available for, um, for you to download. Um, if you're a partner, you can go to Partner Gateway, and um, we will uh, post this, uh, this uh, presentation for you so that you have all the links that I'm showing here. Um, but to find it quickly, uh, just go ahead and search Warehousing Vision Study, and it will take you right to the uh, Vision Study page. On that page, you will see that we do have uh, this presentation that Mark presented, as well as uh, PDF so that you can see the infographic. The infographic is available in our co-branding tool, so you can add your um, logo to the bottom of it and contact information. Uh, so if you wanna you know, pass that out at uh, conferences or um, you know, go ahead and email it to customers or email a link to it to customers to spark their interest in uh, requesting the warehousing vision study, you can use it for those purposes. Um, when you go into the co-branding tool, you can just type in the search word warehouse modernization campaign, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on um, in the uh, marketing materials here, but this uh, is in there um, as one of the assets that you can use there. Um, you can see the list of languages that the report is uh, translated into, and uh, so it's quite an extensive list, and all of those are available on um, the respective Partner Gateway uh, pages for your region. And as far as internal sales, uh, we have a matching source page uh, for the Warehousing Vision Study. And when you go into the source, you can um, just uh, search the word Warehousing Vision Study, and all of those resources are there for you to download. Um, for our partner community, you can uh, download the report. And if you wanna put a link on your website, for people to, uh, for your customers or um, people that you know you do drive to your website, you can go ahead and put it there for people to download, um, and also make copies of it to hand out or email to um, any of your existing customers. On the zebra side. Uh, I think most of you are familiar that we do use our vision studies as one of our um, biggest lead generation assets. So you will be probably seeing some of our banner ads uh, in your you know, industry sites that you visit and things like that, as well as in social. All of those ads do drive to a gated landing page where we do collect customer uh, contact information. And um, once we collect the customer contact information, information. the download will automatic, or the uh, report will automatic, automatically download to them and um, they will be sent a thank you email. Um, also, we have opt-in uh, options for them to uh, receive further information from us. Um, and then those leads will go through our normal process of getting out to our sales community. In addition, we do, uh, we do promote the study on our website, 
We have a dedicated page where all of our vision studies are housed. And if you go to zebra.com slash vision study, no matter where you are in the world, you will be taken to the appropriate site uh, for um, where you are located. And you can see all of the vision studies here. I've got the warehouse vision study circled in red there. Um, we also have these featured content uh, tiles, we call them on our website. All of these will go to the gated landing page to um, uh, generate leads uh, for all of you in the field. Once we have generated the lead and we've notified you that you have a lead, um, certainly using the PowerPoint deck that Mark presented would be uh, definitely a way to uh, have a conversation to further dig deeper into the data and present the data to them. Another way that you can use the PowerPoint deck is you can take select slides and um, if you use them in context of your presentation, presentation, instead of using the entire deck, you could just use select slides to drive home a specific point that you might have. So certainly feel free to do that. Uh, we do have a copyright statement on the, on the bottom of each slide and we do ask that you keep that on there so they know that this is uh, Zebra Research. Okay, okay. Um, so um, I wanna go ahead and launch one more poll here. So what I wanted to find out is, um, let's, let's um, stay on the topic of the vision study and um, do a poll. I wanna find out um, just how valuable this uh, presentation was to you. If you can go ahead and let us know whether we should keep doing these or if you'd like to see the information a little differently. Okay, so Lynn, we did get some responses. We have 56% find this very valuable, 41% valuable. Um, but would like to go deeper into each topic. And then we had 4% that um, felt it was valuable, but a little overwhelming in one presentation. There was nobody that found it not valuable. So those were the results. Wonderful, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> okay, um, just a few more slides uh, around the additional warehouse modernization resources. So I think most of you know that, um, you know, we've, we're committing uh, a lot of time um, around uh, this warehouse modernization because as Mark talked about, we're really at a pivotal point um, with warehouse modernization and, and our uh, uh, decision makers really know that they need to make a change and um, so we're here to help. And so in addition to the vision study, over the past two years, we've really um, launched a lot of really great resources for you, and you may or may not know about them, or you may know about some of them. So I'm going to start with um, uh, Partner Gateway, and, and basically we have uh, a mirrored site on the source, which will be the next slide. But um, if you go into uh, Partner Gateway or you go into the source and you search modernizing the warehouse with Android, or um, go into the campaigns tab, you'll see a uh, campaign in there right now around modernizing the warehouse with Android. And um, this past summer and um, early early fall, we did uh, a lot of on, or we did a lot of GTX webinars. All of those have been recorded and posted both to the source and Partner Gateway. So a lot of re really good uh, topics, really diving deep into the Android mi migration uh, story. So uh, those can all be found on uh, those two sites. We have some sales enablement resources such as playbooks, 
Uh, we have some mobility DNA kind of, we call them snackable videos. So taking a particular topic and um, doing like a one minute video that kind of uh, demonstrates uh, say like Simulscan. And these are all videos that you would be able to download and be able to uh, post to your website if you're a partner and have your own business. Um, also, they'll be on YouTube that you could link to that way. Uh, we have uh, a we have Android in the warehouse uh, small microsite on uh, zebra.com. And uh, there are links to that on both of these pages so you can take a look. But we have some great, um, great videos around, um, you know, our commitment with Google, what is Google doing, um, and um, other resources on, you know, how to migrate that some of our uh, subject matter experts uh, are discussing on these videos. So a lot of good information. Um, we've got um, end user marketing and selling tools. And um, for our partners, we have a Modernizing the Warehouse with Android Partner Event Kit. So a lot of uh, wonderful resources there that you can take advantage of to really um, beef up your knowledge there. And then same basically on the source, we've got that for our internal teams. And then um, here we have just launched um, in the last couple of months, uh, we call it our Warehouse Modernization Hub. And um, I can quickly um, click on that to show you the digital experience. And you'll see here that what we've done is we've talked about, you know, six ways to improve your operations modern technology, worker communication, inbound, outbound, inventory, and picking. And when you click on each of these, you will um, be taken to um, a, uh, you know, kind of a challenges section, a short video, and, um, and then cross-selling three different products on a page and then feature products on each page. And then we'll be using the warehouse vision study to um, collect leads for that. We have a short quiz that um, asks some of the questions that we asked in the survey. And we uh, have our, um, our, anybody who's taking this short quiz, they kind of can compare to what the global audience, how they answered it. So it's a really nice uh, way to, uh, kind of introduce and uh, show our leadership around warehouse modernization. On the partner side, um, we have uh, a lot of digital, or not digital resources, but um, assets that you can co-brand along with a landing page and an email, uh, downloadable assets that you can um, uh, co-brand with your contact information and logo and um, banner ads if you do any type of uh, paid advertising for that. And uh, all of these languages are available for our digital experience. experience. Here are links to both um, Partner Gateway and the Campaign Builder. When you get in there, go ahead and search Warehouse Modernization Campaign. Other resources that we have, uh, Hopefully you're all familiar with our new blog and uh, we have um, over 50 blog articles that um, are available for uh, any of you to um, either uh, link to, um, use on your social, you know, link to on your social channels. Um, if you have your own blog, you can certainly uh, reference our articles. Uh, just to help build up your content for your sites. And, um, you know, go ahead and search the word warehouse and all of uh, the articles that are related to warehouse will come up in that search. The three articles that I have featured here, these are all authored by Mark Wheeler and we'll have uh, many more uh, from Mark um, as, the, uh, as the year progresses. And so I have a poll. The next poll question here is, um, go ahead, we'll open up that poll. <clears throat> okay, it's open, Lynn. Okay, great. Um, we just kind of want to find- a few minutes. Yep, 
we um, just kind of wanted to find out uh, for those of you on the call, um, how, how much of your focus is on warehouse uh, customers, um, just to uh, kind of get a, get a gauge of, of that. Great. Looks like uh, All right. so a lot of we our... have we have the percentages back. So we have less than ten percent. Um, ten percent of that. Ten to thirty is thirteen percent. Uh, Thirty-one to sixty is twenty-seven percent. Sixty-one to eighty is twenty-seven percent as well. And then more than eighty percent is twenty-three. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So it looks like we've got uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of our sales community is really focused on warehousing. And um, so hopefully these resources are going to be helpful to you. Um, warehouse will continue to be a focus for us. So stay tuned for some exciting resources in 2020. Um, Karen, did we have any questions um, in the chat that came up or does anybody have any questions? We have just a few minutes. We just had a question on will this um, be posted as well? It will be. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll post um, the actual uh, presentation and we have a co-brandable version of it and a, a Zebra version. So we'll post the, the presentation and then what I'll do is I'll post the marketing slides as a separate presentation. So you, you can look at those separately and get those links that you saw in the presentation. Okay, and Lynn, the question is, will this be posted as a PowerPoint or a PDF? It will um, be posted as a PowerPoint. Uh, both, well, yeah, both of them will be posted as a PowerPoint. Okay, great. That's the only question on the dashboard. Great. Great. Well, I thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we're, we're really excited to uh, present this data for you. I think it was uh, very enlightening and um, shows that uh, we're really on the right track of all of the things we're doing between our um, investments in um, edge technology as well as our Zebra Ventures in the robotics uh, space. So everybody have a great day, great evening, great afternoon, and thank you for joining us.